So as we continue to discuss this showdown that's going on amongst the false prophetesses, okay, one in particular, uh, Tiffany Montgomery. If you ask me, I suspect that Tiffany Montgomery is rattled <laughs> by uh, Celestio. Okay, I think she's definitely rattled about Celestio because she's putting out videos and sending some, you know, signals against whatever. Uh, Celestia. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> are you scared of another false prophetess? What's going on? Who has the big wigs amongst the false prophetesses? But be that as it may, we know uh, there is some disagreement within these camps and they can sort it out themselves. We out here measuring things about uh, using the scriptures. So this is the text that I want to share with you guys just to show to you how scripture is so consistent when it comes to, when it talks about the things that God has decreed, the things that God has said, especially when he's communicating with his prophets. God is not a man that he should lie and God does not change. So the story that I have for you guys over here is First Kings 13. Okay. So be sure to read this story and you'll be like, wait a minute, what happened here? Okay. So let's take it, uh, you know, let's read a bit about it, okay? So, First Kings uh, 13, 7, okay? And the king said to the man of God, come home with me and refresh yourself and I'll give you a reward. And the man of God said to the king, if you give me half of your house, I will not go with you. I will not eat bread or drink water in this place. For so, this is the key moment I want you guys to take, okay? For so it was commanded by me, by the word of the Lord, saying, You shall neither eat bread or drink water nor return by the way that you came. So he went another way and did not uh, return by the way that he came to Bethel. Okay? So this, uh, I encourage you guys to read uh, the entire chapter. It's a story about a prophet who was the man of God. And God had sent him to go and give a message to King Jeroboam, who was in Bethel. And he was traveling from, uh, from Judah. So when he gave the message to uh, Jeroboam, who was out there, you know, raising up orders, you know, false God, false worship. And he came to prophesy that this order is going to be destroyed. And because Jeroboam did not like what this man of God was prophesying, he commanded for the man of God to be seized. And he extended his hand. And his hand, uh, he wasn't able to draw back because right there and then God uh, judged him. And he ended up, you know, asking the man of God, uh, please pray, entreat to God so that I should be restored. And he did that. So after when all that is done and Jeroboam is like, oh, you know what? I might as well invite you to come to my house, right? So you can eat, uh, you know, you can celebrate. I think Jeroboam was doing that to, you know, I guess to get some loyalty out of this man of God. And he refused. Why? Because he said, like, according to what God has told me, I am not to eat, to drink, to go the same way that I came in, let alone, even if you give me half of your kingdom, I will not entertain that. So when all these things was uh, taking place, okay, you, you know, there was other people there who ended up seeing what was happening. And uh, another prophet, okay, who also lived in, in Bethel, his children were there when all these things were happening. And they went home and told their father what took place. Their dad was also a prophet. So when they went to the house and told um, their father, who was a prophet in Bethel, of what took place, this guy was like, okay, another prophet is like, okay, so... Uh, where is this guy at? And they, they told him like, okay, he's left. He went his way, explaining everything that had taken place, right? So he ended up following this prophet. Uh, 1 Kings 13 verse 11. 
So this is after the situation with Jeroboam is done. So now you have a prophet and a prophet over here. And over here is referred to as a man of God and another prophet. Verse 11 says, Now an old prophet lived in Bethel. And his sons came and told him all that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. They also told their father the words that he had spoken to the king. And their father said to them, which way did he go? And his sons showed him the way that the man of God who came from Judah had gone. And he said to his sons, saddle the donkey for me. So they saddled the donkey for him and he mounted it. And he went after the man of God and found him sitting under an oak tree. And he said to him, pay attention to this part. Are you the man of God who came from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said to him, come home with me and eat bread. And he said, this is the man of God responding to the other prophet. I may not return with you or go with you. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water with you in this place. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, you shall neither eat bread nor drink water there nor return by the way that you came. And he said to him, watch this, guys. Watch this in verse 18. I also am a prophet as you are. And an angel, an angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord saying, bring him back with you into your house that he may eat bread and drink water. And the scripture over here is telling us, right? But he lied to him. So he went back with him and he ate bread in his house and drank water. Okay. What is going on over here? Okay. In first Kings. He, this prophet. Okay. He was actually a true prophet of God. Came to him and tell him like, you know what? The angel actually spoke to me by the word of the Lord that you should come back. And lo and behold, this man of God. Ended up going what? Going back with this prophet. Okay. He went back to, uh, to his house. Ended up uh, eating and drinking. Which the word of God had told him specifically not to do those things. But because this man came to him and told him that God has also told me. And I'm also a prophet. You should come back. Him being a prophet, he should have known that even though this guy is a prophet, the things that he's saying is not what God had said. Why? Because God had already communicated with him what he should do. You see? And instead of him sticking to what God had told him, he disobeyed the word of God and went by the word of the prophet. You see what's happening over here? And what is the issue over here? Whatever the prophet is telling you over here, you need to test it with the word of God. And if there is any discrepancy, if there is any contradiction, stick to the word of God. Don't stick to what you're hearing. You see what I'm saying? Because God is not going to give mixed messages. That's not how he operates. God does not change. If he says, you know, thou shall not kill, it's thou shall not kill. There is no any circumstances where you can be like, okay, you know what? Killing is fine. No, it is not. You see what I'm saying? Because God has already said thou shall not kill. So this guy ended up finding himself in this situation where he abandoned, he disobeyed the word of God, which came to him directly. He actually obeyed it before he went to, he refused to eat at, at King Jeroboam's table. He refused to drink, right? He did good. He went about his way, minding his own business. And then somebody else came in as an angel of light to him, right? And told him like, you know what? I'm also a prophet just like you are. But this is also what God has told me. All he had to do, he would just be like, you know what? Thank you for letting me, uh, for telling me that. But that is not what God told me. So I'm going to stick to the message of what God had told me and carry on about his merry way. If you do that, you'll be fine because you can stand like before God. Lord, this is what your word told me. And I followed your word and that's it. 
you leave the consequences to God. So let's listen, you know, let's read some more so you guys, you can see what disobedience looks like, even for somebody who is the man of God, even for somebody who is a prophet. You have a prophet here who is actually a good prophet of God, lied to the prophet, a man of God, and the man of God made his faith. Why? Because he disobeyed the word of God. Prophets have got no right to, dis to disobey the word of God. They are to stand on the biblical truth of the word of God, and that's it. So you tell me, if you're seeing, hearing what Tiffany Montgomery is saying day in, day out, is she matching up with the word of God? Is she matching up with the word of God? Which prophet is you find in scripture who have a foul mouth, who are so prideful, who don't want to receive correction? All they want to tell you is like, you know what? I'm the true prophet. God called me. God anointed me. Well, if that is the case, why is it the things that you're saying? is not matching up with the scripture that says the Lord. So which, what should we believe? So you are never going to give an excuse saying you believe the things that Tiffany said simply because she's a prophetess. No, no, no. You are to stand by the word of God. If this is what the word of God says, you stick by it. It doesn't matter what anybody else says, including Tiffany, including me or anybody else. You just look, the scripture says, says you stick to that issue. So let's see what happened to these uh, prophetess. Okay, read this story. You should read it. All right, so now verse 20, okay? First Kings 13, 20. And as they sat at the table, the word of the Lord came to the prophet who had brought him back. And he cried to the man of God who came from Judah, thus says the Lord, because you have disobeyed the word of the Lord, and have not kept the command that the Lord your God commanded you. But you have come back and have eaten bread and drunk water in the place of which he said to you. Eat no bread and drink no water. Your body shall not come to the tomb of your fathers. And after he had eaten the bread and drunk, he saddled the donkey for the prophet whom he had brought back. And as he went away, a lion met him on the road. And killed him. And his body was thrown in the road. And the donkey stood beside him. And his body was thrown in the road. And the donkey stood beside it. And the lion also stood beside the body. And behold, men passed by and saw the body thrown in the road. And the lion standing by the body. And they came and told it in the city where the old prophet lived. And when the prophet who had brought him back from the way heard it, he said, It is the man of God who disobey the word of the Lord. You see what's happening over here? Therefore, the Lord has given him to the lion, which he has torn him and killed him, according to the word of the Lord spoke to him. See what's happening over here. So even this prophet, he lied to the, the other, you know, this prophet from Judah lied to the prophet, the other prophet, the other man of God, that he lied to him, that the angel of the Lord told him. And then this prophecy came to pass right before his eyes. And him as a prophet, he's acknowledging like, no, this prophet actually disobeyed the word of God. You see, he was responsible for disobeying the word of God. And he made his judgment right there and then. And the other prophet also lied. And, you know, the story does not say how God ended up dealing with him, right? But... Everybody is going to give an account. So you cannot be out here saying, giving an excuse like, oh, but Tiffany lied to me. So Tiffany might have lied to you, but you have a responsibility to search the scriptures to see if what is saying is matching with the scripture. You standing before God and saying, but Tiffany lied to you is not going to cut it. You will give an account on your own. So anybody who is lying to you, they will give an account for lying to you. But you are responsible for consuming the lies. You are responsible for promoting the lies. You are responsible for calling people who call themselves prophetesses who are not. Because you are contradiction to the word of God. There is no excuse. So these are the things that we should take seriously. They are the things that we should take seriously. So this is a clear example that you can see in the scriptures. People who are actually true prophets of God 
instead of them sticking to exactly what God said, they veered off and they made them, them uh, you know, and God ended up judging them. So when people are out here just saying left and right, God told me this, that, and the third, they're lying because we already have the word of God. God has already spoken. So I thought that I should bring this to, uh, to this conversation. Be sure to read uh, First Kings. It's very fascinating. It's very fascinating. It's actually just a, a story that just emphasizes that God is serious about his word. So we also need to be serious about his word. If you're not sure, just be like, you know what? I'm not sure. Okay? And seek to be sure. Because the Lord is going to show you through the word, through the scriptures. We have the more sure word, the prophetic word to which we all do well to pay attention to as a lamp stand shining. So we don't have to worry. Everything that pertains to life and godliness is found in the scriptures. So I'm interested to know what you guys think about this story, especially the story of First Kings. Have you guys read the story before? Were you aware that this story was in the scriptures? Are you familiar with the story? What do you think about it? So be sure to leave the comments below. I want to hear from you. All right, guys, that is all that I had for you guys today. I hope you find this to be informative to you. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Until next time, remember to be in the know. Thank you.